What we will see today is uh, how to go from searching data to cleaning and preparing it a little bit for the for use in Tableau Public. If you are more interested in creating charts or saving stuff on the web, then you will probably have to join another webinar uh, because this won't be covered today. So back to the content, uh, what is finding data? Or how, what are the many ways to find data on the web? And then cleaning and preparing the data. Uh, so to find the data, the easiest way is to let the data come directly to you, and we will see how to do this. Uh, it's not magical. There are some ways to get some nice data sets. Then I'll show you a few data portals where you can find a wealth of data. Then we'll see a bit of uh, light scraping. It's not uh, heavy stuff or coding. It's just uh, using Google Sheets and uh, import formulas. And finally, I'll show you a little bit how to get data from Tableau Public Visualizations. And in the second part, we'll see uh, basic data prepping inside Tableau Public. So stuff like Data Interpreter that helps you clean your data. And pivoting, which helps you visualize some data that is not set uh, in, a, in a nice way for Tableau Public initially, but that is very easy to correct. Finally, I'll show you quickly a free tool that can let you clean your data. And you have more on this in the YouTube playlist uh, in a webinar called How to Clean Your Data with Three Tools. All right. So let's start with the data is like, let, let's start with uh, finding the data in the easiest way, which is having the data fly directly in your mailbox. Uh, I strongly encourage you to subscribe to Data is Plural newsletter. This is a newsletter that is curated by Jeremy Singervine. Uh, he does he does once a week, and he he will collect a variety of data sets uh, that you may be interested in. So this week, for instance, there is the Puerto Rico's recovery data. Uh, the sub subnational conflicts data and patents and trademarks in among the five data sets that he sends weekly. So for Puerto Rico's recovery data, it's uh, the monitoring of the state of the facilities on the island following the Hurricane Maria. It's curated by some guy on uh, GitHub, Michael, Michael A. Johansson. And he just shares the the link to this data set and you can also get more information on how it's collected. So in every date in every newsletter he sends, you will have a paragraph on each data set with various resources, like if there are multiple projects that are using this data or if there are uh, research projects that have been using that data, he will tell you about it so that you can really get a good understanding of your data. So this is the Puerto Rico data set. Uh, the other ones that I found interesting this week were subnational conflicts. So it's a worldwide project analyzing conflicts at a local level in, in all countries. So it could be stuff in Catalonia, in Spain, or I'm not too sure in, in the US uh, if there are some conflicts at a local level, but that's the kind of stuff you could find there. And it's from 1942 to 2016. And then patents and trademarks is another data set that he shares uh, containing millions of, pa of patents and the information related to them. So that's really worth uh, checking. And because Jeremy Singervine is a very open, open source and open-minded person, he put a spreadsheet of all the newsletters content that he's curated so far. So it's been two years, almost day for day. And you see, the last one went out yesterday, and you got all the links to the data. So let me let me share the the link to this newsletter with you. And I yeah, I couldn't recommend you more than to subscribe to this uh, to this newsletter, which is called Data is Plural. Okay, that was my first tip. Uh, next one is Makeover Monday. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this uh, initiative. 
It's a project that has been running in the community for about two years now. Uh, it was started by Andy Cribble and Andy Cutgrave in 2016, and now is the second year, and Andy Cutgrave has given his uh, spot to Eva Murray. So Andy Cribble and Eva Murray are, are sharing a data set every weekend, and they encourage people to revise uh, this data, to publish it on Monday and share it on social networks like Twitter. The idea initially was that they would find a data, data set uh, associated with a chart that they found could be improved. So it could be any, like if we got the beginning, uh, we can see what kind of charts they wanted to remake. Uh, it often comes from big newspapers or they, like new, uh, big websites. And that was the chart, the chart that they found could be improved. And that's why they started sharing data sets to see how people could, uh, using the same data, create charts that might be a bit more insightful. So you see it's been almost two years. And so it's about 100 data sets that are here. Uh, they are on a variety of topics and they are usually clean. So if you just want something to play with and sharpen your Tableau skills, then I would definitely advise that you go check those data sets. I'm also sharing this link in the chat box so that you can start browsing right after the webinar. I will share a link with you to the presentation, but this will come uh, probably tomorrow. So if you are really in a hurry to start playing, then you will have all, this, all the links. All right. And then another way to get the data really coming to you without you having to move a finger is to use IFT, uh, which is an application to allow you to connect some, um, like more than 300 blogging, bookmarking, social media, note staking, or news apps. And so you can program recipes to automatically get your data lined up nicely in a Google Sheet. Um, so I have a few um, recipes on my, of my own. So if I go to my applets, uh, you will see that I have some that track tweets by a given user. So uh, earlier this year, it was the French uh, elections. And so I was tracking the, the tweets by most of the candidates. And the idea is that in my Google Drive, I have a Google Sheet associated with each of these candidates. Uh, so here's an example. And thanks to the IFT uh, recipe, I will get, I will just get all the tweets lined up nicely without me having to move a finger. And so this data I can then analyze in Tableau Public, obviously. So sharing. The, not my applets, but just the general IFT website that you might want to check out. And this particular formula I find pretty useful. So when specific hashtag is used on Twitter, add the tweet to a Google spreadsheet. You could start with this one and, uh, and see uh, if it gives you ideas to create more recipes. IFT recipe to Google Sheet. So those are very easy ways to get uh, your, your data. And this one, uh, data that is pretty newsworthy and that you care about. Um, before we start looking for other ways of getting data, I'd like to remind you of one thing, which is that uh, you should always try to understand your data. So familiarize yourself with the structure, the content, what is the data about, what type of, what type of information does it contain, how many observations, uh, how granular is it, what's the level of detail. Uh, that, that will all help you analyze and visualize better. And so you might want to refer to a data dictionary or a description. And if no one, if known is available, then you might want to create your own. And so I wanted to share with you uh, this data set that I received today for a training next week. It's about Gujarat 
election results. So the state of Gujarat in India, election results from 1962 to 2012. And then there was no dictionary associated. Uh, and I had all these columns with stuff that I didn't necessarily understand. And then there was this sheet as well with columns that had a bit of a clearer name, but still not totally clear. So what I did is I just created my own uh, data dictionary. So listing the column name and what the content is. So this was a guessing game at the beginning, but then uh, as you go deeper and understand the data set better, then you are pretty sure that what you are listing is correct. And I used the content of the columns to make sure that my guesses were right. And I also did a bit of Wikipedia to understand. Like I had no idea what uh, SC or ST meant. And this is apparently some uh, demographic category in India, which means scheduled caste or scheduled tribes. And so no, um, I, I'm, I'm ready to work on this data set and prepare my training next week because I understand it much better. So do not hesitate. If you have a doubt or if you are not sure uh, what the data set is about, take like 10, 15 minutes of your time to make a dictionary of this and get a deeper understanding. OK. I'm checking the chat box to see if there's any question. Um, I see. Let me quickly answer someone. Uh, OK. All right. So next uh, in our list is the data portals. So I'd like to introduce you to a few, a few data portals where you can find data that is well organized, generally speaking. Uh, and those are data.world, Enigma, and Kaggle. So if we open the first one, data.world. Oops, sorry, my PowerPoint just crashed. Uh, but data.world is working. All right, so data.world looks like this. It's a platform that will allow you to find a variety of data sets. And you can just use the search bar. So let's say you're interested in, uh, well, this is very US centric. So I'm not sure that Gujarat elections uh, data could be found here. Uh, but you see a sample of what is available. So admission stats for the University of California, for instance, or um, let's say political parties, boundaries, like you could find lots of stuff, lobbies, lobbyists. Uh, and the good thing with uh, data.world and some of these platforms that I wanted to introduce you is that they really make a point of clarifying what the data is about. So here you get an understanding of where the data comes from and whether it's clean or not. And then they explain what's the objective. And it's so here they, they recently introduced on data.world the notion of a project. So people are collaborating on data sets to reach a, a specific objective. So this is the objective. But you also have some raw data sets where you can just have a description of the fields and understand better. You get a data dictionary, which is very useful. Um, and that will all help you make sure that the data is what you are looking for and that you understand it properly. Yeah, the difference between a data set and a project is that in a project, you can find various data sets uh, that are all related to the same objective. And to access those data sets, uh, you will have to create a free account. So here I'm already connected, I believe. Yep. Uh, but if you are not, here is what you will see. So you still can check the data sets, but then uh, as soon as you want to download, you may need to, you will need to connect. My second example, OK, let me share the link with you first. So this is data.world. And there is a tutorial that was uh, done by the, the folks from data.world with us. 
uh, on Tableau Public a few months ago. So if you are interested, they actually have a data.world web data connector for Tableau Public, which allows you to directly connect to uh, to connect to a data.world data. Oops. Data.world webinar. I'm sharing this link with you. And basically, it allows you to, to get access to the data.word data directly from Tableau Public. So Web Data Connector is to be found here. And then um, then you can just find the Web Data Connector here. So it's a web data connector is just a link that will allow you to um, to access the data. Sorry, Google thought that I wanted to go directly to uh, data.world, but I just wanted the data connector. All right. So here we'll find the link to the web data connector. And then uh, this is how you could just with all this information, you could just get access to the to the data directly in Tableau. Yeah, so that's that's the link uh, type Tableau dot data dot world, and then you just look for your data set. So. And then you, you reach this page, you connect, and you will be able to browse all the data sets and, and connect directly inside Tableau. Um, I'll just show you because I'm not sure you have used a data connector before. It should just take one minute. OK, I give authorization to Tableau to get this. And then uh, let's say I was looking at this data compiler data set. So I just got the URL and now I copy paste it here. And I'm connecting live to the to data.world without having to download the data set first and um, and, and connect it, uh, connect the CSV or the Excel file. So that's pretty neat. Any question? What is the best way to reference data when you publish it online for a portfolio? Um, the best way is to, so if you need to add a description, uh, you should not add it in the same, you should not add it as a footnote or as a header that makes it difficult for, Tableau Public and other applications to read it. Uh, you should always put it in a separate Excel sheet if it's an Excel, or just write, like if you're publishing on a platform like data.world, you should have a description like this. And then for the data dictionary, you just list all the columns, all the variables that you have in your data set, and you add a small, a short description about each of the columns. All right. So I'll just cut the the loading because uh, I haven't I didn't really know about this data set so I don't know if it's big or not uh, but it seems to be pretty big because it's taking some it's taking a while to load. All right. So back to our PowerPoint. Uh, the next uh, data portal I wanted to show you is Enigma. So it's pretty similar to data.world, except that it goes mostly to public data sets. So data.world is a mix of uh, things that are uploaded by users and existing open data data sets that are republished. And Enigma is just uh, public data from like companies, organizations, governments, etc. And here you will find as well a lot of data like the employee salaries of the White House. Uh, and similarly, it's uh, very nicely presented with a description uh, explaining what you could do with this data. 
and then explaining how to get to the data. So you have, you see all the various uh, data sets that are included in this collection. And then you could just choose a specific year and you have um, the equivalent of a data dictionary in the fields area, which tells you what each column stands for. And yeah, and this will allow you to, to get a good uh, understanding of your data. So sharing Enigma. There you go. Sorry, I'm a bit bombarding you with uh, all these uh, all these URLs, but I think this is what you are here for, like to get access to some cool data. So I'll keep sharing all of those uh, while we progress. And next one is Kaggle. So it's another similar platform where you get lots of data. So this one is supposed to be more um, directed to data science people and, and with a machine learning uh, uh, bias, but it, it actually has plenty of data sets that you don't need to, like you don't need to be a machine learning specialist to understand. So for instance, this one, US mass shootings or jobs on, on uh, job monsters. Uh, this one is a bit sad. But like, yeah, US jobs on monster.com. Uh, and again, all of those websites, they follow the best practice of giving you a description and a bit of a data dictionary to explain what all the different fields are about. So pretty cool. And for this one as well, you will need to sign in and you can get the data. Like you can, yeah, you need to download to get the data. So this was Kaggle. Okay, cool. So next on is uh, showing you a bit of Google Sheet import formulas. Just let me know if you are all familiar with the Google Sheet formulas and we can skip it. Uh, otherwise, I'll just spend two minutes to show you and I'll clean a little bit my, my, um, my browser. So there is a very good post by my colleague Florian Ramsager about Google Sheet formulas. So I'll just let you bookmark it. And meanwhile, I will show you quickly how it how it works. So for instance, let's say I have this um, this table in a web page that I would like to scrape, but I don't really know how to do it. I'm afraid that if I just copy paste it like this, I will miss some stuff. Uh, I could do this. Sorry, let me create a new page. Yeah, I could just try to copy paste it here. And it would it would probably work because this is a small data set. Um, but there is a good way to make sure that my data will keep uh, will keep synchronized. And so the way is to use an import, uh, import HTML formula in Google Sheets. So this import HTML formula is structured this way. So you just put import HTML, open the parentheses, then a quotation mark and uh, the URL of the page that you want to scrape, close your quotation mark. Then depending whether it's a list or a table, you choose list or table between quotation marks. And finally, the last part after a comma is the number, the ranking of the table in that page. So here, uh, I'm not sure if it's clear that there are two tables. Let's see what's the first table. If I do one, I realize that it's actually structured with another table. Uh, which seems to be the footer, I guess. Or, oh, it's, it's actually all the rest of the text is a table and then they, they inserted this uh, other table in, in between. So that's what you get. And if you are, let's say, on a Wikipedia page with lots of different tables, you will just have to move uh, slowly to get to the right table. So that's pretty neat. And you will read in this blog post that you have more, 
more formulas. So import HTML is the first one and the easiest one to use. And then you have stuff like import XML uh, and import CSV. So just read on and if you, I'm sure you can find even more resources. This is Google stuff, so no worries. Okay. So last one I wanted to show you is a uh, Tableau public. So how to get the data behind a Tableau public viz that you like. And let's do this with this recent uh, viz of the day from last week, which is a remake of the Makeover Monday. And it's on uh, obesity in the US. So if you just click download, you go Tableau workbook. And you see that here it's uh, it's left white. It's not grayed out. So it means the author allows, allows you to download the Tableau workbook. And when you do so, you are able to save the Tableau workbook on your desktop and then open it. You will have access to the workbook as created by the author. It's opening on my second uh, screen, so I'll just I'll just move it to my main monitor as soon as it's open. All right. Getting into fit. Right, so this is what uh, Anne Jackson created for Makeover Monday based on the data set provided. And if you are totally new to downloading workbooks from Tableau Public, then you will probably be puzzled by the fact that there is just a dashboard, but it's actually easy to unhide all the sheets. You just right click on the dashboard tab, click unhide, and then you will see all the sheets. And in any sheet that you have in a dashboard, you will be able to see this little icon here next to dimensions that lets you see what's inside the data. Like what's, in, what's, what's the data behind the viz. Um, by default, it shows 10,000. So if it's less, if the number of rows is below 10,000, then you will see the entire data set in just one, in just uh, one, one screen. Uh, otherwise, if you see 10,000 rows here, you may want to increment uh, by uh, like multiplying by 10 each time until you reach the actual number of to the total number of rows. So here is just five. Uh, 5,300, I can just copy paste that in an Excel. And then uh, I have like stolen the data. This one is easy, but it may actually not be like, it's it's easy and it's okay. Cause stuff on Tableau public is, uh, is public and people have the possibility to block the download. So people who let the download, uh, are probably okay with you downloading the data, but it's easy to lose track of where the data comes from and whether it's uh, it's really quality data. So I strongly advise you to try to find the source of the data and, and link to the original source whenever you do this. Cause uh, yeah, you might just you might just be a bit too far away from the original source and people might doubt that your data is correct. All right, so that was the last way of uh, finding data. And now let's do a little bit of cleaning. Uh, I, yeah, I'll just move on to the second part. Um, so cleaning and preparing data. And let's see a first example, which is the Tableau Public Interpreter. So this is a really easy way to clean your data. You don't have anything to do. Tableau is doing all the job. Let me close this one and get new, get a new Tableau public. Okay. And now I will show you a data source that is not very clean. Um, and I'll show it to you in Excel as well so that you know what I mean by not very clean. Oop. 
it's about the way uh, the author put some data, like some description of the data. Sorry about that. Okay, so this data is about uh, football supporters arrested by club and by type of offense during the Premier League season of uh, 2013 and 2014. And you see that first, there are many things uh, at the top of my data. So not just the column names and the data, but some, but the title, uh, title of the table. And then there are the, the column headers are actually split on two different levels. So level one, level two. And I've got some merged cells and some others that are not merged. So this is a big mess. Uh, if I was going to to clean this uh, data set in Excel, it would probably take me a bit of time. I would get rid of this because this is pretty clear. And then I would just combine those two. Uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't be very difficult, but it would take a bit of time. So what I can do is directly in Tableau Public, you see that there is this little box saying use data interpreter. And if you right click here, then Tableau has some, like the developers of Tableau have created a tool that is able to see where the data starts and where, and where the data stops to make it simple. So we've gotten rid of all the, the text that is not necessary. And then uh, you see that for, for headers that were divided into two different columns, like here, type of offense and violent disorder, public disorder, etc. Tableau has just combined those two. So it becomes type of, type of offense and then the name of the offense for all of these, uh, for all of those. One thing that Tableau doesn't clean is the total lines. So this, you might want to clean it yourself because those totals are just very likely to mess up with your data because Tableau is doing the aggregation uh, based on, the, on the, the rows. And so if you have a total, then Tableau will think that it's an actual observation and not the total of all your rows. So for this, uh, you might want to first clean the data in Excel or, the, or you might want to exclude it later on, on in Tableau. So if I was to go to sheet one, um, and then use measure names and measure values, and probably make it like this. Yeah, I would probably want to get rid of the total arrests. Okay. And then another thing that is uh, a bit annoying, like if you see my data, uh, even though the types of offense are all the same category, they are actually showing as headers. Um, and this is because my data set was like this with all the, the offense types in, in different columns. It might actually be much easier for me to analyze my data, my data if I just had one column saying the type of offense and then one column saying the number of offense. So this is called pivoting. And you will see that it's very easy to do in Tableau. There is no need to do it uh, in another tool before. So I'll just try to, I'll just pivot my data to make sure that I have one column with all the types of offenses. To do this, I select the first column that I want to pivot. And then I will shift click on the last one that I want to pivot. And I will go pivot. And so those are no uh, invalid. There is nothing in there because I'm, I'm getting rid of those. And instead, I get these two columns, so pivot field names and pivot, pivot field values. And for this one, it's actually the type of offense. And this one is a number of offenses. And you can have a look at your data this way and see the description to make sure that it makes sense. It makes total sense. We have the list of all the offenses 
and then we'll just see the range of the of the data. If I didn't want type of offense here, I could just uh, go. Uh, I could edit the alias later on, or here I could get rid of type of offense in each of those. It's a bit annoying, so it might have been better to do it by hand uh, in the Excel file. I could just have done this, and I wouldn't have had this uh, type of offense problem. But yeah, if it's if it's too late, I can just go like this and edit the aliases, um, and this will make it easier to understand what it's about. But it's very tire tiresome, something like this. And now I would be able to get much better graphs. So this one is not valid anymore because I got rid of most of these fields. Uh, but now I could do type of offense and total arrests. No, not sorry, not total arrests, but number of offenses and see it much more easily. So these are two of the things that you can do in Tableau public directly to clean your data. Uh, I actually had another example for a pivoting that might make it a bit easier to understand. And this is with the example that we saw earlier uh, when we were getting the data about the vote for each parties. So I'll just connect to this data and this will allow me to show you how to connect to a, to a Google Sheet. So you just enter your credentials And then Tableau will yeah, ask you if you allow, so it's the same as data.word earlier, uh, if you're connecting live to some data sources, uh, Tableau will check with the provider that you are giving access to this. And then you've got, here I have all the Google Sheets available on my Google Drive. And the one that I want to check now is the 2012 presidential election popular vote cleaned up a little bit compared to the, okay, if you want to see, compared to the one that I got directly from the import HTML formula, which gets a bit of stars. Uh, I just have a cleaner version. But here is, I have the same problem, which is that my parties, sorry, my parties are here uh, in the headers. So I don't actually have a column containing the parties and so I don't have access to this information to make graphs like I can the only thing I do is uh, I can do is use measure names and measure values um, and get rid of number of records but that that's not necessarily the best way to visualize your data and that doesn't allow you uh, the level of detail that you may want so Let's do the pivoting thing again. I click on my first column, click on the last, like a shift click on the last to select them all. And then I go pivot and I'll get rid of those. So you can just delete like if you don't need them anymore. They, they appear like this because I already created a visualization that needs those columns. But if I hadn't, I would just get this. And then I can say party and I can say number of votes. And it becomes much easier to visualize my data. So I can go party, number of votes. Uh, I have the state. So one thing I could do that would be pretty cool is to create a map of the states. Uh, because I'm in France, so my default is France, but most, like if some of you are in the US, you might have US by default. And so I create this map showing me all the states, and then I can say that I want a pie chart instead. And then I say that my parties are gonna be the colors, and that the number of votes is gonna be the angle. And I could put the number of votes on size as well to make the states with more votes bigger, something like this. It's a bit ugly, but bear with me. It's just a quick example to show you why it's easier to get your data like this with the party as an actual dimension and not as a header. And then I could 
just uh, apply the usual colors for the American political life, which is blue for Democrats and red for Republicans. And this is where what I get. So I get a clean map showing what's the the distribution of votes between the two main parties and the other parties are in gray. All right. So I'm left with a few minutes only to show you um, the tool that's called Open Refine. Uh, it's a data cleaning tool that you can, that you would have to download. So let me share a tutorial with you. Open Refine tutorial and the download link as well. There you go. Um, so how it works, it's something that you will have on your laptop installed. And when you open it, uh, I'll just bring it onto my second screen so that you see Open Refine. It's a file on my desk on my desktop. When I when I open it, I go Open Refine, Open Refine.exe. It opens this uh, black window, but most importantly, it opens this create project and this is something that's on your laptop so don't freak out if you don't know what this uh, this email uh, what this sorry URL is um, and then you can select a file so I'll just get one that's for cleaning which is uh, sorry it's it's not a great topic to discuss, uh, but we're not going to go much in depth. So I'm sorry if you're very, if you're sensitive about this information, uh, we won't, I, I won't be discussing it too much. Uh, this is actually US uh, murders by gun. And so it's a CSV. So I just need to tell Open Refine that it is a CSV that I want Open Refine to parse the cell text into numbers, dates, etc. So that is to recognize the format if there is any format. And then I create a project. And the great thing with Open Refine, uh, which is in my opinion better than Excel, is uh, is the possibility to correct inconsistencies of spelling. So here, for instance, I have a city field that is very prone to errors because uh, it's easy to misspell the name of a city especially because this data set is from Slate and they crowdsourced it. So in Open Refine, uh, and you will see that in the tutorial, you have the possibility to um, edit cells. And so cluster and edit. So just, just read the tutorial or remember that you want to edit the cells in your column. And cluster and edit will show you if there are misspellings and it will just gather the most likely misspellings in your data set. So here for Oklahoma City, I actually have many ways uh, of spelling it uh, with the K here that is a capital letter and here the C that is not. So if if this makes sense, I can just say to Open Refine, yes, I want to merge those. So I'll just go and select all the ones that I think need to be merged. Sometimes it's uh, there's probably a space yeah, here at the end of Los Angeles. Sometimes it's a dot or it's a capital letter. And it's much faster than going by hand into Excel by filtering stuff and correcting uh, manually. And then for Forest Park, uh, I can browse this cluster if I'm not sure. And I will actually see that these are in two different states. So Forest Park and Park Forest are actually two different cities. So I, I won't take it. I will leave it like this. But for all the other ones, they look pretty. I'm pretty sure that they are um, the same stuff. So I can always check by doing browse this cluster and see. And if it's in, in the same state, then very likely it's the same city. And then when I'm done, I merge, select it, and recluster. And I have different ways of uh, checking, like the uh, if it's a likely misspelling. So you can just 
key collision, you have different ways. And once you are comfortable, so they are less and less um, reliable. So I, once you've done the fingerprint one, you're pretty good, but you may want to check. And once you're done, you just close and everything has been corrected. And then you can just um, export your data as an Excel or as a, or, or as a CSV, TSV. And that's a very, very cool tool. So if you have dirty data, I highly encourage you to check it out, read the tutorial, find a simple data set that you would like to clean and, uh, and try it out. OK, so it's been a pretty intense session uh, with lots of data sets thrown at you and some tips about how to get started uh, in Tableau Public with some data that is not totally clean. I hope this is helpful. I'm here for another five minutes for your questions. And um, if there were two things to remember for, from this session, it would be first, know your data. So get some info. If there is no description, Google, uh, Wikipedia, like try to understand better what's in there. And the second one is pivoting. It's very crucial, especially if you get one of those data sets where the dates are like where, where the years are the headers. Because if if you leave your data set like this, then you won't be able to use the date as an information in your chart uh, or in your visualization. So whenever you see a header that actually contains an information and that is not just descriptive of the content of the column, think about pivoting and see how it helps you to visualize your data better. All right, uh, so I'll mute myself to answer your questions. And otherwise, if you have no question, I hope you found this helpful. And I am very uh, impatient to see your visualizations on Tableau Public. Thank you so much. Have a good day, a good evening, uh, depending on where you are in the world and come back to one of our webinars if you need some other skills. Thank you.